Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and Dr. Biden, accompanied by the Vice President of the United States and Mr. Imhoff. <laughs> Whether you are with us in person or joining us from your own home, we are so grateful to share the traditions of this special holiday with all of you. Hanukkah usually comes in the final weeks of the year when the light of the day is cut short by long nights, surrounded by the cold shadow of winter. We remember another time of darkness a battle against hatred, a temple defiled, and a flame that burned for eight impossible nights. The story of the Maccabees is as timeless today as it was 2,000 years ago, a story of finding the courage to stand up for what's right, even when the odds are against us, a faith that finds the foundations of our future in the wreckage of our past. And, a, and of a hope that spreads from the heart like the flame of a shamash. Tonight, on this fourth night of Hanukkah, we see the miracle of life, both on our candles and in our communities. The nurses who work through the night to keep us healthy. The educators who helped carry our students through one of the hardest times in memory. The <laughs> The military families who bear the weight of our national security. Yeah, them. The friends who help us in our time of need. The children who inspire us to build a better future. With courage and compassion, with love and grace, with small acts of kindness, we are a light to one another. We shine through the darkness of a broken world. And now it is my honor to introduce someone who is a light in so many lives. He's a loving father and husband, educator and friend. Please welcome the second gentleman of the United States, Doug Emhoff. Thank you, Jill, for being such a light in all of our lives. Let's hear it for our First Lady. And, and this light is exemplified by the beauty, and the beautiful direct de decorations we see all around us here in the White House. You did such an amazing job. Thank you. You know, a few weeks ago, I visited my childhood home in Old Bridge, New Jersey. And thank you. Yeah. And what an experience. So I actually got to peer into the house and I saw the windowsill where our family menorah sat. I went back to my temple where I was bar mitzvah, unannounced, and that wasn't a brown three piece floor suit, mind you. Um, and then to think that today, I'm here before you as the first Jewish spouse of an American president or vice president celebrating Hanukkah in the people's house. It's, it's humbling and it's not lost on me that I stand before you all 
on behalf of all the Jewish families and communities out there across our country. I understand that, and I, I really appreciate it. And as our great president has said, our history, our values as Jews are an essential part of who we are as Americans. Jewish values are American values. And I believe this deeply. And that's really what makes us being here together, just together, so powerful. So I'd like uh, to take a moment to acknowledge my friend, Hanan Weissman, who is the, uh, where's Hanan? Hanan is the White House liaison to the Jewish community who's not only helped plan this beautiful event, but has helped me so much to be able to, to communicate the things I want to communicate to our community and, and, the, and the country and the world. And this week, Hanan and his wife, Alana, welcome their new baby, Rosie, to the world. So so tonight, we are celebrating Hananuka. Sorry. In addition to Hanukkah. And now, I get to do one of my favorite things as second gentleman, introduce the vice president. She loves her country. She loves her family. And she loves celebrating Hanukkah, which we honored together earlier this week when she and I lit the first candle on the first menorah ever in the uh, vice president's residence. So we were proud and honored to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, my wife, the vice president. <laughs> Happy Hanukkah, everyone. Happy Hanukkah to our great, phenomenal president, Joe Biden, to our phenomenal first lady, Jill Biden. Thank you for welcoming all of us and for what you do every day, for what you do every day. Um, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, thank you for your leadership. <laughs> And Rabbi Lauren Holtzblatt and Rabbi Dr. Aaron Glatt and all the rabbis here tonight, thank you for joining us and always lifting our spirits and reminding us of the importance of seeing the light in each other and through these periods that we experience of darkness, always reminding us of what each of us has and can give to each other that is about light. Um, it is an honor to be here with friends old and new and to mark the fourth night of Hanukkah. As the second gentleman, the first second gentleman said, Hanukkah is one of our fam family favorites as a holiday. And every year our family, like so many around the world, gathered to reflect on the lessons of the Hanukkah story. The power of the people, the possibility of the future that even in despair, there is hope, that even in darkness, there is light. We all know for 2,000 years, these important lessons have been a beacon for people around our world. As Jews have gathered to light the menorah, a tradition that has endured, yes, during moments of darkness, a tradition that has endured in moments also of celebration, we have known and always known that we will not be deterred, that we will not be distracted from what we know is good and our commitment and an enduring commitment to good. After World War II, we remember Jewish immigrants together with merchants and members of the Coast Guard gathered for Hanukkah services on Ellis Island. And as Doug mentioned, he went to Ellis Island and, and looked at the papers of his family members who arrived in the United States through Ellis Island. Decades later, when a brick was thrown through the window of a Jewish home in Billings, Montana, the town came together. Thousands put menorahs in their windows in a stand against hate. And just last year, as hospitals and nursing homes, staff members celebrated Hanukkah with patients who were separated from their families due to the pandemic. 
So tonight we carry on this ancient tradition, this sacred tradition. And when we light this beautiful menorah, we will do so not only for ourselves, but for all those who came before and for all those who have yet to arrive. As one candle lights many, may the hope we share tonight ignite the hope throughout our world for generations to come. And now it is my honor to introduce a man of deep faith. I work with him every day and he is guided by the light always. A leader who deeply understands the Jewish faith and stands with the Jewish people of our nation and our world. Our president, Joe Biden. My name is Joe Biden. I am Jill's husband, <laughs> as I'm known here in Washington and many other places. I uh, Happy Hanukkah, everyone. You know, first, I want to thank uh, uh, Doug and Kamala. And this is a White House tradition, White House tradition. But the first time in history, it is a family tradition. Doug, we're honored that you are uh, you're leading the menorah lighting. And I, uh, I see my dear friends in, in Congress and the community out there, many of whom I've known for a long, long time. And I know uh, how many more are joining us virtually. You know, uh, first of all, I want to welcome our cabinet members, Attorney General Merrick Garland. Stand up so I can see you. Right? <clears throat> He is practicing the Jewish tradition of restoring justice to the Justice Department. <laughs> and Secretary of Homeland Security, uh, Ali Morcus, who has maybe one of the toughest jobs in government, one of the, the, the widest breadth. And I want to thank you, Ali, for all you do. Thank you. One of the brightest scientists and docs I know, uh, the head of OSTP, uh, director, uh, Eric Lander. Eric? <laughs> and I want to welcome Israel's newest ambassador to the United States, Michael Herzog. Michael, <laughs> just please stand up. Come on, stand up. <laughs> ambassador, I look forward to working with you. Uh, to reaffirm the long-standing ties between the United States and the State of Israel. I was saying to a couple of younger members of my staff before I came over about the many times I've been to Israel, I said, and then all of a sudden I realized, God, you're getting old, Biden. <laughs> I have known every, every prime minister well since Golda Meir, including Golda Meir. And during the Six-Day War, I had an opportunity to uh, she invited me to come over because I was going to be the liaison between she and the Egyptians about the Suez and so on and so forth. And I sat in front of her desk, Chuck, and she had a guy, her staff member to my right, his name was Rabin. Uh, <laughs> and she kept flipping those maps up and down. She had that bivy of maps and kept, and it was, it was so depressing when she was about what happened. She gave me every detail. All of a sudden she looked at me and she said, Mr. Ambassador, would you like a photograph? And I thought, okay. We got up, we walked out, and the three of us are standing in that, that rectangular area outside the office. And uh, we, the, the photographers are taking pictures in the press. And Chuck, without turning her head, she looked straight ahead, but talking to me, she said, why, she said, why do you look so sad? And I said, and I almost turned. And I said, well, Madam Prime Minister, I said, you've painted such a dismal picture. She said, oh, no, no, no. She said, don't worry. She said, we have a secret weapon. 
in our battle in this area. And I almost turned again. I said, what's that? She said, we have no place else to go. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, uh, as Doug uh, leads our candle lighting, he'll be joined by Leader Schumer, a good friend of mine. Chuck, uh, we're so sorry about your dad. Abe was uh, passed away. And Chuck, uh, you said in the eulogy to your dad, if you don't mind my saying this, you said he never quit, he never cut corners, he led by example, he knew we had responsibility to others beyond ourselves, and he lived with the conviction that doing the right thing, even when it doesn't, when others don't, will lead to success. Chuck, he described you. He described you, pal. And I'm, you could use the same words to describe you. And, you know, in Abe's blessed memory, uh, I hope uh, you continue to lead us. Thank you. Thank you. We also have a dear friend of mine for more than three decades, someone many of you know as a devoted leader, uh, community leader, uh, um, Susie Stern. Susie, thank you for all you've done. She's joined by Aaron Glatt, an infectious disease doctor and a rabbi. And uh, uh, Rabbi Dr. Glatt has been the champion of encouraging his uh, congregants in his community to get vaccinated. Um, and I also love uh, Rabbi Dr. Uh, Glatt's description of Hanukkah. He said, and I quote, a Jewish holiday is, uh, is Hanukkah. A Jewish, the Jewish holiday of Hanukkah is Thanksgiving on steroids. Um, <laughs> Thanksgiving on steroids. Well, that's pretty good from Rabbi Dr. Glatt and a theolog theological and medical opinion merged into one. Um, look, more seriously, uh, uh, Rabbi has described America as a great nation of kindness. And that's what we must always be, a great nation of kindness. That's not hyperbole. That's a fact. You know, we're the most unique nation in the world. We're the only nation that's not based on ethnicity or religion or race. It's we're based on an idea, an idea. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men and women are created equal. And endowed by the, it's an idea. And so that's why, and our basis of our strength is not the example of our power, but the power of our example. And each successive generation, the Hanukkah story provides a powerful lesson and nourishes the wellspring of hope. In darkness, there's light and cynicism, there's hope and optimism and an unyielding belief that miracles are, are, are possible. When I was recently, as Chuck knows, when I was recently was talking with Xi Jinping, he reminded me, he said, I know, I know, I know, as you said, when I ask you to define America, you said I can do it in one word, possibilities, possibilities. That's who we are, a nation of possibilities. And one such miracle, brings us to a menorah we're lighting tonight. The artist who designed it, as Manfred, a a Manfred Anson, was one of 20 boys selected by the Jewish Welfare Society to flee Germany from Austria in the beginning of World War II. A miracle, but one shadowed by darkness as his younger brother didn't make it out, killed in the concentration camp. Pain, the pain is easy in the pain, it's easy to lose hope and harden what's left of a broken heart and a broken soul. But not Anson. He joined the Australian Army and fought against the fascists. After the war, his sister, who survived the concentration camps, wrote a letter addressed simply to Manford Anson, Australia. That was all it said. And it was a miracle. The letter found him. It found him. They reunited. Their parents had survived the war but had not lived long enough to see their surviving son. Manfred and his sister came to the United States and in gratitude opted, uh, uh, was an adopted homeland. He began collecting thousands of souvenirs of little statues of liberty, of the U.S. Capitol and the Liberty Bell, which is what he used to design this menorah, this menorah we're gonna pay tribute to. Two centuries of two cultures, this menorah is on loan from the National Museum of American Jewish History in Philadelphia, just across from the Liberty Bell itself. And one of the honors of my career was helping dedicate the museum in 2010, where I had a tough job following 
Jerry Seinfeld and Bette Midler were the other two speakers. <laughs> Thank God they didn't ask me to sing. But I was honored to join my dear friend and museum founder, Ronnie Rubin, who passed away this year after dedicating that essential institution. Anson passed away in 2012, and this is the second of his menorahs to be in the White House. As we honor his work, we also honor the abiding lesson of his life, that we must be grateful for our freedoms, and we must defend those freedoms. That is my dear friend and colleague who worked for me for a long time, my staff, before he became a prominent figure in the Congress himself. Tom Lantos often reminded us, in the words born out of his personal experience escaping from Hungary, and uh, that over 2,000 years of wisdom. And this is what he said. He said, the veneer of civilization is paper thin. We are its guardians, and we can never rest. Well, it's paper thin, and we are its guardians. All it takes is an opening, a sliver, a crack, the briefest nod of acceptance or, or legitimacy for ancient evils that have long plagued our society to come rushing in, and you all know it. We just saw an incident so so horribly anti-Semitic, flyers being left at people's homes in Los Angeles. We have to stand against the resurgence of this tide of anti-Semitism and other forms of intolerance and hate here at home and around the world. In that effort, there is nobody more qualified than Professor Deborah Lipset to uh, our special envoy. <laughs> Combat anti-Semitism. You know, when we light this menorah in the White House, when Jewish families place uh, menorahs in their windows, we're proclaiming liberty. We're exercising the freedom that the Maccabees sought to simply practice their faith. And we're showing that there is still light, that even the most fragile flame can be sustained in a tradition and nourish the soul of a people. A little bit of light, a little bit of light, wherever it is found, can dispel the darkness and illuminate a path forward. And whether it's in the temple of Jerusalem or a temple of our democracy, nothing broken or profaned is beyond repair. Nothing. We can always build back better or perhaps build back brighter. So thank you all for being here as we proclaim the light and liberty that this is all about. And now I want to turn this over to another special guest, Rabbi Lauren Holspeth. Holzblatt, and uh, Holzblatt, excuse me, you can call me Bidden. Uh, <laughs> I apologize, Lauren. Who reminded all of us so powerfully after her eulogy for Ruth Bader Ginsburg that despair, despair is never, ever an option. Never. Rabbi, please come forward. Give you this. Can you give it? Thank you, Mr. President, First Lady Dr. Biden, Vice President Harris, and Second Gentleman Emhoff, Leader Schumer. And let me just say, Second Gentleman. It is so wonderful to see you again. Rabbi Alexander and I and all of Addis Israel is so excited that you have been to our synagogue and attending services, and it is our gift to have you in our presence. Nes Gadol Hayapo, what a miracle it is to be standing here today with all of you in the White House blessing the light of the Hanukkah. I mean... These past 24 months have been harrowing. Rabbis like myself carried shovels in our trunks because that was the amount of funerals we were doing weekly. We felt this pandemic more than I can express. We have all experienced enormous loss throughout this pandemic. And of course, 
it is not over. But Hanukkah reminds us that light can grow even amidst the darkest times. And we have been blessed by awesome light. Vaccines, science, leadership built on love. <laughs> Honesty, human dignity, and leaders that are committed to ensuring a vibrant, healthy planet for our children and our children's children. We have to say amen to that. 2,000 years ago, the great sage Hillel taught us the way to light the Hanukkiah. He won over Shammai. We start with one candle, and we increase the light each night, adding one more candle, a little more light, night after night until the eighth night when we have built a mesmerizing glow in the dark. Our change, our charge is not to keep the light only for ourselves, and we know that. We don't keep it trapped, we don't keep it privatized, we don't save it for the few. We are told rather that we should place the Hanukkiah in our windows or even outside of our doors for the sake of Pirsume Nisa, so that we may publicize this miracle and share its light. Let us grow, share, and be inspired by these lights together, and let us build back better. Amen. Amen. It is now my honor to call up Leader Schumer, to call up Rabbi Dr. Glatt, and Susie Stern to light the Hanukkiah. We will first light the Shamish, and then we will say the blessings. Please say them together with me. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher kidshanu b'mitzvotav V'tzivanu lehadlikner Shel Chanukah Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Happy Hanukkah, Chagorim Sameach. Thank you all so much for being here, and thank you to our incredible hosts. Thank you.
Yeah. 